Yes, what's going on everybody? Welcome to another brand new Rugby Muscle Podcast. I'm your host, as always, TJ, and in this episode, we've got a bit of a special one for you. We've got our boy Dara Fitzgerald on the pod. Dara now plays at UCC um, in Cork, which is in the Irish, I want to say Premiership, but it's the top division that you can get in Ireland outside of the Pro 14. And as a 19-year-old prop, he is doing phenomenally well for himself. He's also involved a little bit in the, well, a good bit in the Munster setup and a little bit in the Ireland setup. Um, and we couldn't be more proud of him here at Rugby Muscle. He has done everything that we wanted and everything that he could have possibly done. Um, he was our, one of our first ever members of the Rugby Muscle protocol or the Rugby Muscle system. And he has not, you know, he went to the gym and he has not looked back since. He's kept stepping up, stepping up, stepping up, making each little step as it has come to him. He hasn't it hasn't really like shot out of nowhere and, and turned from nothing into something. He's just taken the little steps that he's needed to every single time. He's not really put the pressure on himself and he is really enjoying his rugby and he is thriving. So if that's something that interests you, you can always go to rugby-muscle.com and check out all the services that we offer if you want to really thrive in your rugby. But other than that, let's get into this podcast, episode 99 with Dara Fitzgerald. All right, so we are live with Dara Fitzgerald, former Rugby Muscle star, current Ireland youth star, right? Uh, kind of, yeah. <laughs> I mean, depends. I guess it depends on your def- definition of star, but you know, uh-huh. we're all into the hype over here. Um, how you been? You got a gym session later? Gym session later, yeah. Feeling pretty good. What's that going to involve? Um, at the moment, I'm in a bit of a power and speed phase. I'm just trying to get faster, really. Um, I feel like ever since moving up to senior rugby, I'm kind of not well i've never been like really fast but i feel like i'm kind of losing a bit of speed and like carries and stuff so just working on that at the moment yeah fair enough you think that comes from like a lot of the bulk that you've put on yeah kind of like well even since, since september like i've lost a bit of weight but it's more just like speed training i think i need to do yeah 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 well uh actually on a future podcast we've got uh if you listen to the one where we had Sam Portland on, he's now like almost specialising in speed, mm-hmm. and so he there's he's got a lot of cool um, speed sort of not tips and tricks, but more like this is what you're actually aiming for, as opposed to hey, just do deadlifts but faster or whatever it is. You know, like once yeah. you get advanced, speed is its skill. So that'll be that'll be a good listen for you. Yeah, yeah, and see how you can. Uh, so you can pick up those speed on those carries. That's sweet. Anyway, more importantly, the most important thing that everyone always listens to these Rugby Muscle podcasts for is when I play this music. And we get a really weird fact of the week. Or we just get let down by a shit fact. So it's, it's all good because people are very prepared to get let down by a shit fact. <laughs> Uh, okay, so this is my shit fact. Um, I did a bit of research for coming on. So apparently, Charlie Chaplin entered a Charlie Chaplin lookalike competition back in uh, like the thirties or forties, <laughs> and he lost. He didn't win. <laughs> <laughs> That's immense. He's like, no, look, I look most like me. I am me, and they're like, no, nah, you, yeah. you don't look like Charlie Chaplin. <laughs> He's like, no, but I am Charlie Chaplin. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um. As that almost reminds me of the the weird story with the um have you have you read a lot about that footballer that entered the under twenties championship and then they found out he was actually uh he was like oh, thirty five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, No no no, this is me and they're like, No no, that's not you. Like you are you and it's not even like he looked young. I, yeah, he looked pretty old, yeah. <laughs> these points aren't overly related, but anyways. Um Alright, so that was uh, that was a better fact than than what we've been getting recently, so Kudos to you, Dara. Um, yeah, so we wanted just to bring you on the podcast today and just discuss like um, how you've been, how your training's progressed. Because now, now that you're actually playing like men's men's rugby, I wanted to know, and I thought it'd be good for the listeners to know exactly what uh, you know what that involves, how you've got to where you are, and, and what you're currently doing now. Because you've Essentially, um, we, we get a lot of people that come in and they download the 50 free conditioning guides, which you can get at rugby-muscle.com. 
sorry for cheaply plugging whilst having a chat with you, mate, but that's how we're going to do it. Um, yeah, we have the people that then they come on and they download the conditioning guides and they want to be the best player that they can be, you know, but they're like, oh, I've only started, I'm only playing at my village club or my, my local club, whatever it is, or my even my high school team and my high school team sucks or whatever it is. And now they're like, right, how do I progress? Because I know I can be good enough if I get the right training. I know I can push on, but to see it with someone like you really, really like cements that possibility. So... That's why I wanted to bring you on. Yeah. So, like, yeah, I started off, like, in a village team myself. Like, I was only playing for the love of it, really. And it wasn't until, like, maybe 16 or 17 when I realized, like, I kind of had a shot of it. And obviously, that's when I did my research online and reached out to you. And, you know, I started working whatever. And, like, uh, I suppose from when last time we talked on the podcast, um, I was, I think I was just finished with the uh, Monster Under 18s. Mm -hmm. So since then, since then, really, I've been, I did a whole another year with Monster, Monster Under 19s. Got trials at Ireland, didn't quite make it, but it was still a good experience. Um, now I'm playing uh, with my uh, uni team in Cork here, um, and like I'm playing men's senior division one, like in all of Ireland and. It's a big step up from where I was at Munster, I think, like, just, like, physically and tactically, more so. But, um, yeah, like, I've kind of kept everything the same, really, from the past two years. It's all just ticking boxes, really, every week. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Like, that's it. Like, it's one of those things where, like, none of what you've accomplished has been, like, overnight, you know? We, we've been expecting you to, you know... Uh, well, I haven't, it's not, not really burst onto the scene, but we've ex been expecting you to like really do stuff and, and push yourself and, and keep achieving, keep achieving. And all you've been doing is exactly that. Like it's just the next achievement, the next achievement. And it's, it's all, you know, you're not taking a giant jump. You're just taking small steps, small steps, small steps. And now, mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're essentially like you just said before we actually started recording, you said you're exactly where you want to be. Mm -hmm. So yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so uh, you're a prop, right? What position? Tight head, yeah. You play tight head. So how is that? Um, how's that suiting you in men's rugby? Uh, it's pretty difficult. Like, like, I'm surviving, not really dominating anywhere, but, like, you know, I'm getting along fine at that level. But, yeah, it's pretty hard. It's, like, it's a scrummaging, really. It's more of an experience thing, I think, you know. Like, you can, like, you can work in your technique and you can work in the conditioning and, like, the strength, the power, but, like, at the end of the day, like when you're like scrumming against guys who've had like over 100 appearances at that level, like it's really hard to beat them at it. Like, yeah, but I, I do. Do you make up for a lot of it with like your natural and um, well, just with your strength in general? Yeah, I try to. Like, it's often like it's often a wrestle, like in the scrums, more than like you know an actual battle. But like, I don't know. Most of the time, I don't really come out on top. Maybe once or twice in the game, but. Nice. Yeah, I'm just I'm just trying to get a bit of experience in this year, really, and just see how I can push on next year, maybe. Yeah. Uh, funny enough, it kind of reminds me of like what I'm doing at the minute, and this I, I hate talking about myself, and of course when I'm interviewing, <laughs> especially someone like you. But um, you know, I've been doing this Brazilian jiu-jitsu thing, and yeah. there are dudes that are you know half my size, like barely any well actually the better ones that have good athletic ability that's there's there's a problem and it's just it's all about manipulating another person's body <clears throat> yeah and you get a bit of a preview of that in you know you get a bit of an element of that in in scrummaging for sure so it's where yeah the more that's why the like a lot of especially old school before like rugby players started really taking the gym seriously all the best props were at least 32, right? They're all older, older, older. And you would never see young props ever because mm -hmm. the only way you would learn is by doing a shit ton of scrummaging. Yeah. Right? Exactly. And, and now we've got people like you, we've got like, you know, all of the people that have come in on the scene, um, I'm going to mention the same breath as Carl Sinclair, so you should be flattered there. Um, mm -hmm. People like him, people like, you know, just young props that are now developing a real strong physique in the gym and that ha has them hold their own against these people that know how to real wrestle, wrestle and manipulate other bodies and these other, you know, they've got all the techniques yeah. down but they can now hold their own and then they can even, once you feel the technique, it helps you be able to appreciate, you know, the steps to eventually do it yourself and that seems like that's what you're doing. Yeah, like I always, I always see a scrum as like nearly like a golf swing, like you want to kind of have 
the same technique the whole way through and like any little bit that like puts you off your golf swing you know you hit a pretty crap shot like and same in scrumming like if you do if you get any little bit wrong like in the setup or like the other prop gets any bit more and you like it kind of just messes up the whole scrum really and like I could change the game like in a second for you because you know you could mess things up with that yeah man like it's so important is if you've got if you've got a prop that can be a, a you know a superstar around the field but can't operate at, at scrum time you're, yeah, you're making exactly. a, a huge sacrifice to the point where it's you know sometimes it's not even worth it mm-hmm. um, yeah. that's interesting that's super interesting and have you have you found any other issues with so scrummaging i'm like obviously that's 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 obvious because you're playing uh how old are you 19. So you're 19 year old. You're playing, you know, full, um, full grown men, and you, you know, you're you're not a small man yourself, but you're playing mm-hmm. full grown, fully you know, veterans, um, especially in the level that you're playing at. Um, and it's just that's that's kind of obvious that you were going to get not exposed, but really challenged there. Have you found yeah. any other challenges playing with men's rugby um, as opposed to juniors? I think it's the the tactical preparation of it really as well. Like it's. It's like, I think it's as close as you get to maybe like the Pro 14, like that kind of level, you know, it's like, it's pretty intense, like every week and it's always like preparing, preparing, preparing all week and like you're looking at video set, you're doing video sessions like the start of the week and you're, you're, review, you're reviewing your last game and then, you know, you have to like take the, the pros and cons from that game and then you have to look at the video of the next team you're playing and, you know, how are we going to beat this pack and how are we going to... Like how's our lineup gonna do against this, and how our micro play is gonna be against them, and how do we stop them in the front line? Because like a lot of teams we play, they be you know pretty big, physical, and we're um, like we're a college team, so we're kind of it's kind of like a stereotype in Ireland for the college teams to like throw the ball about. So that's another challenge in itself, to, like the the fitness of like you know preparing yourself in um, to a conditioning aspect uh, to play. With the team I'm playing with, like our tactics are fairly built around like throwing the ball around and you know fast plays. So I had to prepare myself for that as well. And um, so yeah, it's kind of the conditioning, maybe the tactical, and I suppose the physicality as well. Seeing as um, like playing against grown men every week, I wasn't really used to that coming into it. But I find when I go back down to my own age, because I'm I'm playing under twenties as well with college. So um, okay, when I go back down to my own age, like I kind of. You know, the hits don't feel as hard, and I feel like I'm smashing more people, and, you know, it's generally, we're not easier now, like, maybe under 20s maybe a bit faster than the senior, I find, but um, definitely physicality is a lot, a lot higher in, um, in seniors. Um, that leads me to a really good question here. Um, if you are, if you had the choice between either playing the under 20s, like, full-time, or the men's team full-time, which one would you do if... Say next year you were, you were guaranteed to play at whatever level you're going to play at. Say say it was like you you're guaranteed a contract. Where would you choose to play to become a better player? Um, I'd be thinking. Um, is this with uh, college or is this with my team or who is it with? Yeah, so this is with the college. So you can either play with the under twenties college team or you can play with uh, the men's team. Yeah, um, I think I picked the men's team to be honest. Like I'm getting pretty good exposure, like with the men's team at the moment, and mm-hmm. like it's my first year there. And also, like if I had another year under my belt, like I'd I'd be pretty confident in myself. Like I'd back myself to push on next year with it. Yeah, uh, um, and then why do you ask if it was with the college team? Because I guess if it was the men- men's team versus monster under twenties, you would choose the monster under twenties. Uh, yeah, probably the kind of. The whole monster uh, setup, like, is say if you were going into an, an academy setup, you'd be um, in and out with your club a bit. You wouldn't really, you know, be playing with your club every week. You'd be training at monster, and they might not have as many games. And uh, like, maybe you'd be, I don't know, like your chemistry and your te- your teammates and stuff might be as good. Like, say at the college, and um, but you know, then again, you it's hard to turn down an opportunity to right. monster academy setup at the same time. Yeah, because a lot of a lot of making it in rugby is you know get is networking as well as as just being the best player. Yeah. So you have to get right in there. That's cool, man. Um, let's just take a step back and sort of um, go over 
who your uh, the the team that you're playing for at the minute is and what sort of level that is because it's a bit different to because you're saying that you're playing for a college team but it's also a men's team so I want to just clear that air up. Yeah, so I'm playing with a uh, UCC in uh, Cork it's University College Cork, mm-hmm. and um, we're in Division One A of the All Ireland League. So it's kind of a mixture. I think there, yeah, there's three colleges in it, and there's seven uh, men's senior teams. Okay. Um, so and this, so this nice is the family. highest. This is the highest level out of Pro 14, it's and it's is it so? It's yeah. the highest amateur level, is it? Highest amateur level in Ireland. Yeah. Nice, but it's pretty much. It's almost taken as if it's professional. Pretty much, yeah. Okay, cool. So let's let's get it. with that said. Let's get into what a training week looks like for you because obviously it's treated like it's professional, but you you go to college full time. So how does how does an average week in a in the life of Fitzy look? <laughs> so uh, I'm Monday um, at the moment. This semester I'm in college from ten until five. Every day. Um, uh, no, just on Mondays. Oh, okay, sorry. Um, so I'd be in from 10 until 5, and um, so I'd be up, obviously, have my breakfast and head off. Maybe br- I'd probably bring a meal with me, um, and then I'd be looking to get into the gym after college, uh, come home, rest. So Monday's kind of an easy day. Yeah, yeah just ease just, into the week. College, college gym, go home, yeah. Um, uh, Tuesday, Tuesday, I have a fairly light day, so I might I go to the gym again on a Tuesday. Uh, morning just before college and I'm in college then um, from 10 until 3 then I don't have training again until um, 7 o'clock so got a lot of time to recover and eat there uh, we're on the pitch then on Tuesday so that's fine um, on a Wednesday then I'd head up to gym again after college um, try to do a bit of conditioning on Wednesdays so I'll just uh, keep topping up every week, really. That's, so when, you, uh, when you're hitting the gym on Wednesday, that's a conditioning session as opposed to big weights and stuff? Yeah, kind of, yeah. Oh, I guess all of your stuff isn't too big a weights in a minute if you're working on your no, speed. No, power. really. We're, yeah. Yeah, like, it's... Um, what we're kind of working with at the moment, like, uh, games-wise, is we kind of have a block of four games for four weeks straight and then two weeks off. So we've uh, two more blocks left and that's the season over, but... I guess pretty heavy at the moment in season, I suppose. So sure. I kind of train. I'm training around that. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah. Then Thursday again out of college, and I just go do our pitch session. Then on a Thursday night, then college Friday take. Uh, we've not done a Friday then because we usually have a game on a Saturday, and then go play that and recover Sunday then. Cool. So, um, you're only so you've only got your two pitch sessions, is that right? On Tuesday and Thursday evenings, like most clubs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and do you have any guys that play for the college team that aren't attending the college? If that makes sense. Um, yeah, we do. We have a few. Yeah, and so then they don't make as many of the gym sessions, I guess, or, and stuff like that. Yeah, they kind of do them in their own time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's a that's a nice little balance. Um, so you mentioned there about video sessions and stuff. Yeah. Where does that fit into your week? Uh, usually on a Monday, if we can just we kind of have to do our own self review and then send the feedback to the coaches. Okay, so they'll send you out the video, the game, some of the film, and they'll they'll ask you for things that you want to look for and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, that's interesting to see how you can manage almost what is a full time, you know, training schedule, even though you're only training twice a week. So it's yeah, it's definitely interesting to see because people think that because um, I've seen it, they think that people train that you know that if once you make the pros, that you're you're training every morning, every evening, or every morning, every afternoon, you know, five six days a week, and it's yeah. like that's how you get it. But it's not. It's a lot of recovering. It's a lot of management of fatigue and stuff, especially in season. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Like Tuesday, we'd have um, our hardest pitch session. Yeah. Really, like it's you know a lot of aerobic work and a lot of like well, it's kind of tactical preparation, but like at high intensity. And, yeah. Um, we do a lot of scrums on a Tuesday as well, and then on Thursday is more like a captain's run nearly. It's just a walk through and like pretty low intensity stuff just working on skills and just tactics and fine tuning for the game on Saturday kind of yeah perfect yeah because you know you're not really going to get a big physical benefit 
on Thursday to help you out on that fu- next Saturday. It's it's no, the weeks no. and weeks and weeks of Tuesdays that benefit the Saturdays physically. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. That's that's cool, man. That's that's a. And you enjoying those weeks? Do you ever find that the weeks yeah, get yeah. away from you, or is there any any struggles that you have with those weeks? Any days that are real tough, or anything like that? Um, it can be kind of tough after college, depending on how tough the day is. But like, you know, there's no real motivation there. It's just kind of like I like doing it, so I don't need to be motivated to do it. You know? Yeah. I guess the only problem would be um, if you are eating like reactively right you would yeah you end up you could end up uh finding yourself at training and you're like oh shit i'm really hungry i didn't eat much today and then you end up training like crap yeah it kind of happens well not a lot but it can happen where i just like miss my alarm or something and i wake up late and i'm like oh shit i don't have enough time to make food so then you're kind of just going into college and you might have had like a half breakfast and you know, you're kind of waiting to see, like, is there anywhere you could get a nice lunch in town? And it mightn't be as good as something you cook at home. And yeah, that can happen. Yeah, like you could you could make it do by going out, but it's never going to be as controlled or as a good a meal yeah. as one that you're going to cook at home. Could be tastier though. Mm-hmm, true. That's that's the other Often thing. Is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, <clears throat> all right, cool. So that's your weekly routine, and you said, you mentioned that you're in a bit of a strength and power block. I mean, a power and speed block at the minute so yeah um do you want to just give us you don't have to give us any real specifics but well my first question is like are you doing any heavy weights at all right now um kind of my last my last cycle i was like maybe um three weeks ago i was doing kind of heavy weights because we had like we uh, when we were off for christmas we had five weeks off so i tried to get a bit of strength work in then but yeah, I've been lifting heavy for the last maybe month. Uh huh. And but right now, and now you're taking some time off of lifting heavy. That you're back because you're back in playing every Saturday, right? Yeah, I'm just doing um, sprints and jumps, and um, yeah, maybe a little bit of accessory work just to keep topping it up. But it's mainly mainly uh, sprints and jumps. Yeah, sprints, jumps, and then a bit of fluff work just to keep the guns pumped. Keep taking over. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Um, but. With that, have you found yourself on Saturdays getting any weaker at all? or Because you said when you did the strength work, you, you felt like you were getting a little bit, or when you were doing the yeah the big weights, you were getting a little bit maybe slower? Yeah, or, a little bit. But, um, I wouldn't feel weaker, though. Maybe it's just a mental thing. Like, I'm kind of, every game I'm playing now at the moment, is just kind of, you, you can't really have any fear in yourself. So maybe, maybe I am getting weaker, but, like, I don't notice it as much because, like, you can't really have any like fear playing at that level, if you know what I mean. Yeah, for sure. I, I mean, my explanation for that would be that probably because speed drops off a lot quicker. So if you don't work speed for a long time, you will definitely 100% go slower, right? Yeah. But if you don't work strength for a while, you can retain that for a, a little bit longer. Same thing for like how to keep like, keeping your muscle, and especially the same thing for like your aerobic fitness. Like you have these people that enter triathlons when they're in their twenties. And they're still fit as a fiddle when they're in their forties and fifties, even though they haven't done as much. You know, it's it's easier yeah. to keep, especially strength as well. It's easier to keep yourself as strong as you are. You know, compared to like gaining strength, it's super easy. And then yeah, yeah. you can actually focus on like now. It's really good because you've got like you're as big and as strong pretty much as you need to be to yeah. You know, you can you can be you're you're going to gain a little bit more size as you age and that sort of stuff. But like you're as big as you need to be right now. So now what's holding you back and we discussed this in a previous podcast with uh dr james hoffman what's holding you back now is your speed so it's it's important that you work that but as, as long as you've done enough speed work you're probably going to retain most of your strength if not all of your strength anyways yeah definitely so cool all right um <clears throat> a few more questions for you here that i've got mate um surrounding you you and your your, your new career is firstly i guess um what did you find any um, sort of issues that came out from you playing for the, that small village team? Because I, I know I said we wanted to talk about the, like the pa- player sort of pathway. Mm-hmm. Um, we've had a lot of people that are like, you know, I'm in this one club and I'm never going to get noticed and, and this sort of thing. Um, was there anything that you did in particular that helped you like ascend the ranks, I guess? Um, well, obviously when I was a bit younger, maybe like, yeah, like 15, 16, like... Yeah. Um, 
I thought if I could stand out maybe like with uh, my skills, like my ball handling and passing and stuff that, you know, uh, at the time, like, like I was I suppose brought up like looking at perhaps like John Hayes, Mike Ross, who were like, you know, just pure out and out scrummagers and just tacklers, breakdown and there wasn't much skill to them. So I was kind of like, I don't know, it was just a small thing always in the back of my head. Like if I can like, you know, be a good passer, maybe it'll help me stand out. So. Like just even before training, just like trying like crazy offloads and stuff, just like stuff like that. It's actually gonna help my game at the moment now. Not that I do them all the time, but you know, it's just giving me like um you know, better bit of an appreciation edge. and like passing and stuff. Yeah, yeah, a bit of an edge. Yeah. Um and then I suppose apart from skills then, um I think I reached out to you when I was like sixteen or seventeen, it was just before I entered the monster pathway and yeah, I just wanted to get a good base of strength and conditioning. I think that's really what helped me because like I kind of have, like, I do have a strength and conditioning coach at the moment with, uh, with college, but, like, even when I don't, when, it, when I'm not with college then, like, I have, um, you know, I have pretty good knowledge of, like, what I need to do or what I can do, and, like, I can set out a plan for myself if I had to, like, nearly. Yeah, that, and I mean, that's so valuable because no one knows you more than you. You know, you've got your own yeah. best interest. Whereas with Munster or whoever, like, that, you know, other clubs are always going to have sort of other smaller motives, I would say, mm-hmm. but yeah. and, and less knowledge of like you physically, you know. So mm-hmm. yeah, that's a that's a good point. Um, but what? So what would you do right now if you were in the same shoes? Like if you were now like your age now, and you're you, you're the player that you are now, or close to the player that you are now. Mm-hmm. How would you, how would you still tr- how would you retry and scale that ascend those ranks, try and get up to the top? Um. I probably would have focused on maybe conditioning a bit earlier on because I'm kind of not lacking in it at the moment, but I'm a small bit behind where I'd like to be. And if I could go, say if I could go back to like six year old, three years ago, back to my 16 year old self, and told him like what he needs to do now to be where he wants to be, like three years later, like I'd like to be more conditioned and like a bit faster. Maybe if I'd worked on those stuff three years ago, you know, I could have been like a lot better than I am now. Yeah, I mean. Do you think that just comes from being more well-rounded? Uh, yeah, maybe a little bit. Yeah, because that reminds me of when we um, we were working with you and you first started doing, oh, you first started getting your trials and whatnot with Munster. And mm-hmm. you got a little, like we did a lot of strength work, a lot of uh, power work, and you know, it made you a machine on the pitch. But when you were doing those real specific fitness tests, you, know, yeah. you don't want to be the guy at the back. Like, yeah it's not necessarily about <laughs> yeah it's but it's not necessarily about like being at the front of every everything but it's just not it's about being at, not at the back because when you're at the back then that's a definite like a real eyeballed weakness yeah it's kind of giving them an excuse not to pick you nearly mm. and that's the other thing right is if you're coming from some small village team or you, you know you're not you're not going to a private school or any of that stuff it becomes harder because you need, you know, people sometimes are looking for reasons not to pick you or, or more more that they're looking for reasons to pick these other guys that are in a better scenario. You know, yeah. it's more of a gamble to to, to invest uh, in your sort of selection, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I pretty much would agree with that. Um how are you? How are you enjoying actually your your studies at college? And do they? And does does the college like? Does any of that get in the way of your training, or does that? Do you find that you have a good balance right now? Um, yeah, well, I, I do like my course. Like equally as I'm liking rugby, I must say. Um, obviously, I prefer being on the pitch than in the classroom. But um, like, I think I've I think I've found the balance fairly well uh, in the first semester, and. Um, I'm in my second semester now, so I'm kind of, it's, it's the projects and kind of, you know, like continuous assessment, those kind of things, they're the kind of hardest things to balance when you have deadlines and, you know, you might have to like say, oh, maybe I just do the gym in the morning and do my project in the evening, but that could be hard at the same time as well, waking up like really early to go to the gym, then go to college, then, you know, sit in the classroom or the library doing your project then for another two or three hours. Yeah. Do you ever find that you um that's a that's a really good one as well actually. Do you do you find that you stiffen up though from from your time at college especially if you're training AM and PM? Yeah, um 
I don't really, I wouldn't think I've stiffened up. Like, I, I walk to college a lot, so I kind of keep my legs fresh all the time. And do you do any mobility work at all, like, to, I guess not to help you not be sore, but to more to help you, uh, more, more to help you just get in the good positions in scrummaging or in rucking or anything, anything like that? Do you do any mobility work? Yeah, I kind of do, like, maybe... 10 minutes before and after every session warming up yeah what is it what does that involve um just a little bit of kind of like uh maybe core i do a nice bit of core these days just to kind of help me stay in stronger positions like in yeah like scrumming and rocking and stuff um do not a lot of stretching but maybe like um you know just kind of holding myself my body in positions and like i'm really looking to like strength of my hips and my shoulders these days because I find after games like they're the two biggest points where like are getting the sorest yeah and 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 the and that sort of stuff helps after afterwards or just yeah, in general definitely. nice that's really cool that's, a, that's interesting and do you is there any other sort of work that you do that people wouldn't have thought that you do uh, either in the lovely. gym or in the kitchen or yeah, we've we, we've pretty good uh, facilities here, like uh, in the college. So like, uh, usually after every game, we do a hydrotherapy session. Um, I, f I find maybe it's just a mental thing, but like I kind of feel after games that they really help. So it's kind of going from between like cold pools and warm pools. Mm -hmm. Do you do those after trainings or only after games? Just after games. How cold are the cool pools? Uh, seven degrees. Woohoo! Yeah. Is that fun? Uh, yeah, it's it's good, good, good crack. Really, like a lot of laughs in there and stuff. But yeah, that's that. That always reminds me of the the tub club that we used to have. It used to just be, mm -hmm. it's so cold the first time they get in. You're like, oh, I'm never gonna. And then once you, if you get a bit of banter flying, then it makes it a little yeah. bit bearable. And then you keep going back in and back in. But then you have those people that we used to have. Like at least half the team would just not go into the uh, cold one. <laughs> yeah, we did the same. <laughs> <laughs> Um, cool, but you find that benefits you a, a decent chunk, huh? Yeah, definitely. What about any soft tissue work, yoga, any sort of extra stuff like that, or is it just uh, not really? Just no, stay yeah. kind of chilled out. Yes. Yeah, stay like that is. I mean, you sound like you're a very low stress person as it is. Um, yeah, and you I'm and you sure, know. Man. You you ran you ran through your schedule and yeah it's it's fairly fairly full on but it's still also like you said it's stuff that you want to do you know you haven't got any you haven't got any kids or any like rat like major stresses so I think I've just thought of this myself as a theory but that that could be a big indicator or a good big reason as to why like youngsters find it a lot easier to recover I mean obviously physically your body's different any like more better at making those adaptations and, and recovering yeah. well anyway but also you just live a much lower stress life so keep that up mm -hmm. yeah. I think that's going to really help you cool alright last three questions we've got mate for you um, number one uh, what's your go to or favourite supplement that you use if uh, you have one. I actually don't use any anymore boom love it <laughs> the more people answer this supplement question with like a a shitty sort of eh, you know food or or, or any yeah. you know there are some really good supplements out there but that's interesting you don't use any at all protein powder uh very not very often but i have it like whenever you need it yeah yeah i mean and i, I always consider protein powder a food rather than a supplement anyway cool yeah. uh favorite uh training exercise so we can do one that you're either best at or one that you find benefits you most as a prop. Uh, it's a, I'm best at probably squat and um, as a prop uh, out of weight of bear crawls. Oh, yeah. where does the weight go or do you have the vest? Um, vest or usually put a kettlebell on top of me as well and it's kind of a bit of a core exercise as well to like make sure that the kettlebell doesn't wobble off your back. Yeah, because you want to you want to maintain that posture, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. And then favorite food, mate? Uh, steak and chips, definitely. Steak and chips, hell yeah, that's <laughs> uh, steak and potatoes. That's pretty Irish, right? Yeah. Good stuff, lad. Um, all right. So, if anyone wants to follow you, follow your career, where do they find you? 
Uh, I suppose you can follow my Instagram. It's uh, Derek Is it a private? Gerald. Hmm? Is it a private Instagram? Uh, yeah, but I'll I'll know I'll know who's who's coming from this podcast. Yeah, there we go. Boom, Dara Fitzgerald. He, he, you don't really post too much about your rugby, though, right? Uh, every now and then. Yeah, when it when it's relevant, it's not it's not. But what I'm saying is, it's not like you know those you know how you get like the professional guys accounts now that are just like yeah. great game this uh, weekend, uh, pleasure yeah. to play with X. You know, and it's all so generic shit. Whereas yeah. you know, at least you put a bit of crack on there, right? Yeah. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, it's great to have you on, mate. Um, I like getting you regularly on because it's it's good to follow your career. It's it's you know you've done you've done us myself both myself and Alex and the whole Robbie Muscle brand like really proud because you've you've really showed what is capable of, if of someone that has the real you know not even massive amounts of dedication but just enough that you know you get to really enjoy your rugby and now you're playing it at the high you know the real high level to get even more enjoyment from it you know mm-hmm. it'd, be, it'd be one thing if you if you did all this stuff and you hate it and you're like oh fuck rugby i don't even want to be here <laughs> or whatever but you don't you enjoy it and it makes you enjoy it more so you know you can say that you're incredibly disciplined or you can just say that you put in the work to do the, do what you want to do you know is that really discipline yeah like, no i i don't know as a discipline really. i think it's just like I think really, if you want to like play rugby to a high level, you really do have to love it. Like, cause there is a lot of commitment, and like, I suppose there is discipline in it too. But like, you know, you're willing to make like certain sacrifices because you, you love playing rugby, and I think that's the main thing for anyone, really. Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing, right? Is if you enjoy all of this, like, it's 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 fun. It's so. It becomes not necessarily easy, but it's not hard. It's not like it's a day in, day out, oh, this is a grind, like, you know, yeah, what yeah. people make it out to be. It's actually kind of fun, like eating good, you eat, get to eat good food, you get to get, you get to see your body physically change every week, and you get to see you perform, that, you, know, you get to feel your performance improve every single week on the field. Yeah. So, boom. All right, mate, that was awesome. Uh, really great talking to you. Um, like I say, was it Dara underscore Fitzgerald? Dara dot Fitzgerald. Dara dot Fitzgerald D A R A G H. You should be able, actually reading this on on the mm-hmm. podcast thing on the podcast title. I've got your name spelt right, and uh, there'll be any other notes in the show notes uh, wherever I can find them at rugby muscle.com. But thank you so much for being on, and everyone, I'll see you next time. All right, guys, thank you very much for listening. If you've enjoyed this episode, or if you've enjoyed any episode of the rugby muscle podcast please go ahead and give us a five star rating and type a quick review it takes about a minute and it really helps us out a ton helps grow the show helps grow rugby muscle and in turn we will be able to give you guys the best quality content information and programs that we possibly can if you're interested in any of that stuff like the free physique nutrition video series or the tj strength supplement guide or the 50 free rugby conditioning sessions you can find them all at rugby-muscle.com or by going through my Instagram profile at tj.strength give me a quick follow and until next time guys I've been your host as always TJ see you soon